Hey everyone, it's Kate from Wild Hills Up, where we share about family travel and outdoor adventure. Hey, we hope that you are doing really well. We hope that your day is going great. We are just waiting to get some coffee and treats before we head off on another hiking adventure here in the Seattle area. And speaking of that, I wanted to share an awesome resource with you. I don't think I've shared it in a while. I have done a review of when this book first came out, but I wanted to share it again here since we are, or since we're going to be using it on this hike. Of course, this is if you are in the Seattle area, but it's called 75 Great Hikes. And if I'm not mistaken, Moon has, Moon Guides, who is the publisher, has a lot of these hikes for a lot of different areas. This one is particularly special to me because my cousin actually wrote it. So the author is Mel Osbeck and includes 75 hikes that are within about two hours of the Seattle city limits. And so here's a handy map to kind of explain. So she breaks it down into regions and then at the beginning of each region, so for example, this is uh, the Mount Rainier area, there's a map and then all the numbers indicate which hike and then there's also a nice handy chart that where you've got trail name, the level, distance, time, Very elevation, nice. and page. We are up here. So this is all of Cougar Mountain. So we often go here yeah. to Red Town and that's where Coal Creek Falls is. Back to that hiking guide. Highly recommend it, has great yeah. descriptions, really detailed information, and I love that she also often has suggestions to extend the hike or even alternatives that are near that same trailhead. So check it out if you are in the Seattle area and I'll, I'll leave a link below to it and also leave a link to the more extensive review that I did a couple years ago. Is this the Bear Ridge? What do you think happened? Now it's a little place to Maybe you could shot some out for fire. they go that far down. Those are your pongos? Hey, let's see the band. What's your what's your band name? 
<laughs> You're the runny noses? You're the runny noses! Uh, runny and noses. you guys are, are you a hair band? Oh, no. <laughs> Moss band? What's wrong? It's a Sasquatch. Where is it? Over there, I saw it. How big? Uh, two times bigger than you. Whoa. Is this the Lost Eagle? We're looking for Lost Eagle. So we just got off a trail that actually allowed horses and it reminded me of when I was here with Bergen. He was a toddler. So it could have been about seven years ago and we ran into a woman riding a horse. This is a really fun memory. Georgia just pointed something out that is probably good to share is that there are a lot of different trails within this trailhead. So it's not just a simple out and back or simple loop as you really have to pay attention to what you're choosing to do. I've come here and kind of made up the hike as we went along, but it was nice to actually have a guide so that we actually felt like we knew what we were doing on this one. Because of COVID, they're not handing out any maps any paper maps, which usually there are paper maps at the trailhead, but they have a really a really detailed map that you can take a picture of. But the point is, it can be really confusing in here, so it's important to have either directions on what you're going to do or, or have that map printed out or on your phone. Anybody watch that show Alone, where they drop contestants off on remote places? The ones we watched early on, ones where they were dropped off in these remote areas of Vancouver Island. That's what that shelter reminded us of, or the rustic shelters that the people built to protect themselves. So we're approaching the trailhead, kind of funny. The great view at this hike is actually at the beginning of the hike, so you don't have to hike to it. You could just drive up here and check out the view and go back home. And it's called the Million Dollar View. What is it? It's a little house. Who lives in there? I don't know. Probably the raccoon or something. Mm. Do raccoons live in, down in a tree? No. They like to live up high in the tree. Who do you think would want to burrow down in in a stump? A bunny? Maybe. Oh yeah. If we wanted to make it shorter. If we wanted to make it shorter, we could have come from here. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yep, we could have. But that's another thing that's great about this trail system is that you can make it as long or as short as Have you, you want it to be. Me? Hey, this is Bergen. <laughs> Like Bergen was just saying, we could have just taken that blue Tibbetts, Tibbetts Marsh Trail and called it a day, yep. but I'm happy we did that loop. Yeah. Mm. Ended up being, let's see, so it was three and a half plus 0.8. How many steps? Ah. Let's see. Clocking in at 11,614. What do you guys Skittle. think? Yeah. The million dollar view. I'd pay for five dollars. Five dollar viewpoint for you, not a million? How many for you? It's really cool. It is pretty, I like it a lot. Pretty. Tell us about the land here. Well, that's Lake Sammamish. Looking north. Way at the end is Marymore Park. The very far end oh, of the lake. Oh, okay. Seattle. That's like Redmond way over there. When you check out the Million Dollar View, make sure you stop at the placard and you can learn more about who this trail system was named for. 
we're gonna sign off from the Million Dollar View here at Harvey Manning Trailhead. And thanks so much for joining us. If you like our videos, make sure to hit the like button and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next adventure. We hope you're staying happy and healthy and we hope you are getting out and having some brave, wild adventures and... Whoa.